For this lesson, we're going to concentrate on the audio area entity, and this is an audio object that utilizes FlowGraph to be able to drive the different parameters through a shape object inside of your scene. So to get started, what we're going to do is go to Create Object, and let's make sure that we go into the Area section, and we have Shape, which is what we're going to use. Before we do anything, I'm going to go up to the top right here, and I'm going to click Toggle Snapping to Geometry. So once we toggle that on, we can click the shape, and we're ready to actually draw out, in this case, a simple square right inside of our pit. So I'm going to go and click four times, and on the fourth point, I'm going to double-click to close it. What we're going to do now is rename this to AAE underscore shape. And we're also going to add height to this, so let's make it about five meters. Pretty big shape. I'm also going to set it to Display Filled. And what I want to do next is I want to actually turn on our audio debug, just so I can see it before we get into actually adding the entity. So I'm going to go to the console, and I'm going to type in Draw Audio, and I'm going to click S Draw Audio Debug, and I'm actually going to stick in A, B, C, D, E, and end it right there. These are all just different ways that you can toggle the debug and actually access what it's doing inside of the scene. So immediately you notice that we have the audio translation layer with the SDL. In this case, what we're going to do is actually use WISE. So in order to change that, I'm going to type in IMPL and I'm going to come down to S Audio IMPL name and I'm actually going to type in Cry Audio IMPL capital W W I S E. And what this does is it will change our ATL, or our audio translation layer, to WISE. And now we're ready to actually add the audio object into the scene. So let's go back to audio. And what I want to do is I'll add the audio area entity. And still having the snapping on, I'm just going to click it, and I'm going to drag it in. Now I'm going to disable the snapping so I can pull it up. And I'm going to rename this to AAE underscore toot. So now I have both of the actual objects inside of my scene. And the last major component that I'm going to use is I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a flow graph. And we'll call this one AAE underscore FG. Very simple. And we're going to right click and we're going to add the selected entity. And the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to our components over here. Let me scroll this open so you guys can see it. And we want to go to the audio section and we want to get the RTPC which stands for the real-time parameter control. It means something that we can drive, in this case the fade value, at runtime. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a trigger which is basically going to house the actual sound logic and what sound is triggered based on the logic coming out of this entity. I need to actually assign these to the graph entity, in this case the area entity, on both of those. Otherwise, it won't actually house the logic internally in this one thing, or it will be global. So I'm going to change the fade value into the RTPC before it had nothing. And then I'm also going to go in here, and I'm going to choose an RTPC. You can notice we only have one folder to go to. And then we have environment. And what we want to do is house an area fade distance. And this works in particular with ambient sounds. So we're going to drive an area fade distance, and we're going to actually go into a play trigger. And if you remember, I said I wanted to go and get ambient sounds. So in the L Global folder, I'm going to go to L Global Ambient, and I'm going to pick the first one. Let's just be real easy and pick Cave Mysterious. So I'm double clicking that, and I want to change the on far to near, which means play. That means I'm coming from far to really close and I want to trigger this cave mysterious sound. And then on the opposite we have on near to far, which logically would stop the trigger. So now that we have all of the logic hooked up inside of FlowGraph, we still need to actually marry these two together. So I'm going to select the shape and I'm going to come down to operators. If you don't see it, scroll it open and we want to add a target. So we're going to add the target and we're going to click in this blank space. And now it says pick an entity. And we, what we want to 
actually add is the audio area entity we had done before. So now a line pops up and we notice these two are connected. So this is exactly what we want. So clicking off of the shape, we can go into the area entity and we can see a few things. We noticed down at the bottom the entity properties, which are the most important things. We have an environment. Now an environment is actually something you can choose to do, and this will house the echo or the reverb that would be within an environment. What we're actually going to do is leave it blank. And the same could be said for the environment distance. Both the environment distance and fade distance are actually calculated in meters. And they're also normalized, so based on the distance of how far you are, it's in a zero to one value so that everything actually has a proper fall off. So what we're going to do is actually just keep the environment blank and we're going to keep the fade distance to say, actually we'll keep it at five and then we'll check out in the draw debug for audio and we'll see the actual audio debugging in the distance. So I'm going to go up and I'm actually going to click the controller icon and I've hopped in and I can see right away this is exactly where this actual audio entity is firing off. And if I look at it, I can see that the area fade distance is 0.5 pretty much, which is the distance is 2.5 or 2.6 meters from this point. And if we remember, we have 5 meters. So that means it's a direct correlation between the normalization of the area fade distance at 0.5 and half the distance of 2.6 meters from the actual object because of the 5 meter global distance. So this is just a simple way that you could house that logic and fire it off and how exactly this works within the game engine. So I hope you have learned a little bit about the audio area entity and how you can, and how you can house complex logic inside of Flowgraph with your specific entity to drive multiple things in your scene. And not only that, You've learned how to debug it to see if what you actually typed in is correct and it's firing off how you had planned.